from Clarkston, Michigan, the greatest city in the world. It's the Jose Aliaga Show. Jose Aliaga knows everyone. Get to know him as he interviews some of the most fascinating people from the greater Independence Township area. And now, broadcasting from the studios at Clarkston High School, the home of the state champion wolves, here's Jose Aliaga. Welcome to the Jose Aliaga Show. Today we have a special guest, a very conservative leader in our community. His name is Bill Buller. How are you doing, Thank Bill? you, Jose. Glad to be here. Thank, Thank you, you for inviting me. Absolutely. It's, it's an honor and privilege to have yeah. you here in my show. Bill, a lot of people know who you are, but we would like to know more about you. And can you tell us about your experience in public office? Well, I served 20 years in the legislature, House and Senate. Then I served 10 years in uh, county governments, uh, including uh, six years as chairman of the board of the Board of Commissioners, and the last two as uh, clerk register of deeds. Oh, so um, you were the state senate as well? I was in the state senate, yes. Can you tell us a little bit about what, some of your bills that you passed? Well, I'm very proud of a conservative record as a legislator. Uh, I uh, sponsored a lot of tax cuts, including cutting the income tax to 3.9 percent, and we're not back there yet. It got raised uh, during the uh, Granholm administration. Um, but I also uh, uh, was uh, chair of the House Tax Committee when we adopted Proposal A that was approved by the voters that cut property taxes in this area, probably cut property taxes 60, 65 percent or so. Mm -hmm. Which is very, very good to, yeah. you know, to know. I always believe that we, you know, we should give some money back to our taxpayers. You know, taxpayers are overburned with high taxes right now. Absolutely. I like that, to hear that philosophy. But uh, I remember um, about uh, you passed legislation also that saved many life about uh, a seat bill or something? Yes, the seat belt law was enacted uh, back in the early 80s, mm -hmm. but it wasn't a primary offense. A police officer could not stop you unless they saw another offense like speeding taking place. So I sponsored and got passed the bill to make the seat belt law a primary offense. Mm -hmm. uh, as a result of that, our seat belt compliance was at one time the highest in the whole country. It was up around 95, 96 oh. percent. Uh, that one law has saved millions of dollars and saved thousands of lives. So I'm very proud of that. Oh. And it was controversial at the time. Oh, I see. I see. So it's good to see more efficiency and, you know, something that actually work after you propose it. Exactly. That's good. So as, as a clerk, some people don't know exactly what is the job description for the Oakland County Clerk. What is the job description? County clerks are different from your local uh, municipal or township clerk. Mm -hmm. uh, there's four divisions. There's okay. the court records division, uh, there's the vital records division, there's the elections division, and then the register of deeds. And they all have different functions. Mm -hmm. All very important functions, but different. Mm -hmm. So for example, elections. What the Oakland County Clerk do for elections? The, the Oakland County Clerk is a uh, supervisor of uh, election procedures and works with the local clerks in the conduct of elections. One of the things we did when I was clerk is we put an electronic uh, modem in every voting machine mm -hmm. in, the, in the whole county mm -hmm. so that we have uh, about the fastest election results in Oakland County of any place in the country. Mm -hmm. And the procedure is if, if, say, your precinct is in a school or a public building, at 8 o'clock when nobody else is in line to vote, mm -hmm. the election workers will turn a key and lock the machine mm -hmm. because they're actually locking the paper ballots within the machine. Then they turn one other switch and the results from that machine go directly to Oakland County and within 30 seconds we were able to put that on the internet. So, example, this last August elections, wasn't maybe a true test because only 20% of the precincts had an election because mm -hmm. certain schools and certain uh, 
cities had elections, but others didn't. Mm -hmm. But the results were in 100 percent within uh, within one hour. And that was implemented by you. Yes, that's a, a major a step we took forward, um, and it really is important to let the people know the mm -hmm. results of an election. You know, a lot of people in the old days they'd stay up to midnight, 1 a.m. A lot of people have to go to work the next day, so uh, mm -hmm. they'll get results early in the evening. Good. So you believe in technology to improve and make yes. efficiency? What we did in every area of the clerk's office is mm -hmm. to push technology because basically every transaction that we can handle electronically, we save money. Mm -hmm. And we were able to do more and more transactions. As the economy improved uh, after our lost uh, decade or the recession that we had, um, we were doing more and more transactions. But we were able to do it with the same number of people because we pushed more into electronic uh, transactions rather than somebody standing at a counter. Mm -hmm. and you and during, when you were a clerk, probably you saved a lot of money, right? During because you did some changes there that... Yes. You know, most governmental budgets are... Uh, mm -hmm. 80 or 90 percent of, uh, of the budget is personnel. Mm -hmm. So actually, when I was there uh, at the county as chairman of the board, uh, we all took pay cuts. Mm -hmm. And it took really about 10 years to get the pay back to what it was at the start of the recession. Uh, I'm very proud to have worked with uh, Brooks Patterson, Sheriff Bouchard, and other leaders of our county to take our budget and and uh, and actually streamline it during bad times because county government is depending on property tax revenues, and during the recession when property values went down, mm -hmm. th that meant less revenue. So we had to cut, uh, and I presided over uh, six balanced budgets uh, for Oakland County. And you know what? We worked with both sides, and we had uh, unanimous votes on all the budgets. Oh, very interesting, because it's diff difficult to accomplish in these times, you know? Right. Because working with the other side is... Yeah. Well, what we did was mm -hmm. uh, uh, we have a committee process, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, we had discussions as the budget was going through the process. And Brooks Patterson uh, is a great leader and submitted balanced budgets. But that's not to say that you can't make some changes here and there, and maybe you increase spending in a little area because there's a need to spend more money in that area. Well, then we cut back in another area, so we stay balanced. Uh, so through that process, uh, uh, Oakland County is, is known around the country for having uh, very good uh, uh, fiscal management. Mm -hmm. And during your time when you were in the, as a chairman of the county commissioner, what was the most difficult issues during the time? Well, we, we had an issue uh, uh, that's now a national issue, which is um, there's an e-verify system mm -hmm. to make sure that people who are employed by Oakland County and contractors uh, are legally in this country. Mm -hmm. And we were one of the first counties to accept the e-verify system, and now that is in every contract. Mm -hmm. with every uh, outside vendor, mm -hmm. we have a lot of outside vendors, uh, they have to comply with the E-Verify, uh, and that's, that's a good safeguard. That's good. Yeah, of course, we need to know who we employ, who we have in our room, I agree with that. So, and then, um, so when you were the chairman, some people probably don't know what is the county commissioner, so can you explain us a little? Yeah, the county commission is the legislature of county government, and it's uh, not a well-known body. Mm -hmm. They don't get into controversy that often. Mm -hmm. um, the primary purpose of the uh, county commission is to adopt the budget, mm -hmm. and uh, we have a two-year rolling budget, and uh, it's a balanced budget. Um, but other issues come to the county, uh, grants to be accepted, uh, contracts with outside vendors if they're of a certain amount. Um, basically, uh, uh, the legislature of county government. Okay, and all, each of them represent a certain area of the county, correct? Yes, uh, there are currently 21 uh, commissioners and uh, you can look on the county website to see who they are. Mm -hmm. um, uh, they are a part-time body, mm -hmm. meaning most of the county commissioners have other jobs, mm -hmm. but they meet, half the meetings are on Wednesday night and half the meetings are on uh, Thursday morning. Um, 
and then there are committee meetings. Usually the week before a commission meeting, you have committee meetings. So uh, in a given week, you might uh, just really be part-time. Uh, some weeks, you know, mm -hmm. if there's a hot issue in some committees, it almost could be a full-time job on a given day. But overall, it's a part-time job. Oh, okay. But still, they make important decisions for the county, right? Correct. Because the budget correct. has to pass through them, yes. grants, and yes. some tough decisions. Yes. So, okay, so basically they work closely with L. Brooks Patterson. Exactly. He's our leader, and he's a great leader. Yes, he is. He is. Well, yeah. I mean, we have a lot of improvements here, and I know last year he cut taxes, and that was... Yes. A uh, we're going to see a uh, little uh, less taxes in our December tax bill. Mm -hmm. So you believe cutting taxes improve our economy instead of yes. raising taxes, correct? Yes. I'm a, I'm a uh, tax cutter from way back when I was in the legislature, when Governor Engler was governor, we cut over 40 taxes. And I, I sponsored the bill that eliminated uh, Michigan's inheritance tax and, uh, and a lot of other taxes that we worked on. Um, now the legislature recently has, has abolished even the personal property tax. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one thing I tried to do there. We could never get a consensus. But we were successful. And uh, probably the proudest uh, achievement was when my bill was signed into law to roll back over four years the income tax rate to 3.9 percent and that's the lowest it's ever been. Oh really? Oh interesting. And Bill, so you served with Governor Engler or else also yes. with Gralholm or just Engler? Um, I was there in the legislature House and Senate uh, 20 years. I served under Governor Blanchard for eight years mm -hmm. and then 12 years of John Engler. Oh, who wow. uh, I think is the greatest governor we've ever had in the state. He did a lot of great things. Mm -hmm. Any of the particular bills that actually you work with Engler that you remember? Well, uh, the seatbelt uh, bill primary enforcement is, is probably the most uh, uh, significant, but there were a lot of different uh, tax cut bills. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, so we really reformed the, mm -hmm. the tax system in, in the state over a period of years. And since you work with two former governors. What do you think about Governor Snyder? I think he's, he's, uh, he's different. Uh, I admire him personally. He's different in that he's not a professional politician. He's a mm -hmm. businessman. But he's learned to work with the legislature. Mm -hmm. And I think it shows that a, a good person that maybe with a good background in business can be a successful governor. Mm -hmm. uh, the unemployment rate now in Michigan is close to 5%. Uh, when Governor Snyder reformed the, um, the Michigan business tax and made it just a corporate income mm -hmm. tax, uh, that's stimulating business. And uh, so economically, our, our future is bright. Yes, I mean, for where we've been and where now is, is uh, absolutely you're right. Uh, part of that probably is just the national economy getting better. and. Uh, but they always say that Michigan is first to go in a recession, last to come out. <laughs> and so our property values have just started in the last year or so to rebound. Mm -hmm. And that helps local governments because local governments uh, get a lot of their money from the property tax. Mm -hmm. And Bill, when you were a clerk, um, how was your relationship with other clerks in the county? Well, we tried very hard. There's uh, 60... Uh, over 60 municipal clerks, uh, township clerks, uh, city clerks, and uh, village clerks. Mm -hmm. And we worked very closely with them. Uh, for example, um, when we put uh, an electronic modem in every voting machine, those voting machines are in the jurisdiction of our local clerks. So mm -hmm. we, uh, we had meetings with our local clerks and said, what do you think of this idea? We worked with them. and. It was unanimous that every clerk in the county cooperated and said, this is great because we can let our voters know the results earlier. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it it's, was a great relationship with all the local clerks. And we had, I, I didn't realize, 60 clerks. Yes. Wow. Um, but what we did in every area of the clerk's office and the register deeds was push technology. Mm -hmm. Like in the court records, uh, department, uh, we, mm -hmm. we implemented and expanded an e-filing system, mm -hmm. which most people don't realize if you're not in court, which mm -hmm. if you're not in court, you're mm -hmm. better off. Mm -hmm. But attorneys know what an efficient e-filing system we have. That saves money. 
Um, in the Register of Deeds Office, we implemented a new uh, recording system to expand uh, recorded documents. And basically, we can do a transaction, whether it's a filing of a court pleading or a recording of a deed or a mortgage, we can do that more efficiently if it's electronic than we do with a piece of paper. But for those that uh, still like to do pieces of paper, mm -hmm. uh, and some older people don't have computers and are not computer literate, okay. but we implemented a system that if you bring, a, say, a deed or other document to record it to, mm -hmm. to the registered deeds, it used to be that two or three weeks later, we'd send you your document back to you. Mm -hmm. Now we implemented a system where probably within two or three minutes, the property description mm -hmm. on your deed is checked to make sure that's accurate. We check to make sure all the statutory requirements are met. And within two or three minutes, you can pay your fee mm -hmm. and actually walk out of there with your deed. Mm -hmm. And it'll be marked with the library and page where it's recorded. And so that's, that's a big improvement. Oh, okay. Yes, it is. I mean, because I know some people in, you know, older people don't know much about technology. They struggle. You'll be able to do probably something on the internet. So that will actually help the, the part of the people in Kangaroo. Right. We will always them. have service at the counters. Oh. I mean, uh, not everything could be electronic. Not everybody wants to do electronic. Mm -hmm. But we offer people a choice. And as uh, people become more and more educated, uh, we saw more and more electronic transactions. Oh, it's, it's incredible. Uh, Bill, so in what other department besides election and deeds uh, the clerk do? Well, the vital records, uh, vital rec okay. division, uh, if you get married, you go there to get a marriage license. Mm -hmm. We handle uh, death certificates. Mm -hmm. uh, notary publics mm -hmm. are, are uh, sworn in and recorded at okay. the vital records department. Mm -hmm. One thing we implemented in that area was to issue a veteran's ID card. Okay. We found out that a lot of stores were giving veterans discounts or preferential treatment, and there was no standard uh, way that a veteran could identify themselves. So they could bring in their discharge papers, which is usually a big, bulky paper document. So mm -hmm. we started issuing uh, veterans' ID cards, mm -hmm. and that's proved to be extremely popular. Oh, okay. All right. The, uh, the other area that, uh, in the vital records that uh, is going to be more important uh -huh. is concealed pistol licenses. Uh, I was in the legislature when we uh, adopted the, uh, we called it CCW, concealed weapons at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was one of my proudest, proudest votes because there were people who said, if you let law-abiding citizens mm -hmm carry concealed weapons, concealed pistols. Oh, there'll be mayhem in the streets. It'll be like the Wild West again, <laughs> people getting shot. Yeah. And none of that has uh, proved to uh, become true. So uh, people who get concealed pistol licenses, we have what's called a shall issue system, mm -hmm. where if you meet certain statutory requirement, which includes some pretty rigorous training, mm -hmm. um, then you're entitled to a concealed pistol license. Mm -hmm. And now um, a new law is taking effect that the clerks will be totally responsible for issue those licenses after the police background check. Uh, it used to be that a gun board mm -hmm. would meet and issue the licenses and tell the, local, the clerk to issue them. Mm -hmm. But now the, Turk clerk, the county clerks will be totally in oh. charge of that system. Oh, interesting. I didn't know that. That yes. was implemented this year? Or? Yeah, that's going to be implemented later this year. Oh, interesting. So, um, the, the general public probably won't see any, um, um, any change because the gun boards didn't bring in everybody. Mm -hmm. They only brought people in when there was a question, uh, was there a prior conviction or something? Maybe some of the police background mm -hmm. checks raised some issues mm -hmm. they weren't sure of. Maybe somebody was charged with a crime, but were they convicted or not? Mm -hmm. That might be unclear in the court records. So uh, most people who uh, got uh, CPL licenses, just saw the clerk, but there was a gun board in the background that made the formal decision. But now that the county clerk will have total uh, jurisdiction on that, it's, it's even more important than ever. Mm -hmm. Now, 
the clerk is one of the six leaders that we have in the county, correct? Yes, we have six countywide elected positions. Mm -hmm. um, we have county executive, mm -hmm. uh, we have sheriff, mm -hmm. we have the clerk register of deeds. Mm -hmm. In many counties, clerk and register of deeds are two different offices. Mm -hmm. But in Oakland County, we combined them years ago. Mm -hmm. And then there's the uh, uh, treasurer, the prosecuting attorney, mm -hmm. and then the water resources commissioner, which used to be known as the drain commissioner. Right. And they're all elected countywide in presidential years. So in 2016, mm -hmm. all six of those offices will be on the ballot. Oh, okay. So now, is I believe, I don't remember, I don't recall, but I, I think in some of the issues, you guys, the six of you, they, the six of the elect officials make a decision sometimes? Well, they're all By individual, vote they're individual offices with statutory responsibilities mm -hmm. for each. Where we cooperate is uh, we work all six uh, mm -hmm. of the county wines, well, one is Brooks Patterson. Right. But Brooks Patterson has a, a fabulous staff of budgeting people. Mm -hmm. And um, so we work with Brooks's budget office to refine our budget, and then Brooks mm -hmm. presents it. And uh, in mm -hmm. other counties, there's been fighting between, yeah, uh, between the courts and the county executive, or between mm -hmm. the prosecutor and the county executive. We don't have that in this county. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a culture of each of those six mm -hmm. offices works with the other mm -hmm. six. And the most important thing we do is um, back in what they call the lost decade, um, the budget had to be cut. Our revenues were less. Everybody knew that. Mm -hmm. And everybody cooperated um, in identifying for mm -hmm. Brooks's budget people where are the areas that we think we can cut. Mm -hmm. and, and it's difficult to cut. Uh, people think, well, you just, you can cut 5%. Well, you might have to cut 5%, but mm -hmm. where is it? Which specific line item? Mm -hmm. And because most of the costs of, of a government like Oakland County are personnel costs, you've got the salaries of your employees, mm -hmm. you, you've got the fringe benefits. So what we did in Oakland County, and we only laid off a handful of people, but what we did was mm -hmm. when a position became vacant, we didn't automatically fill that position. Mm -hmm. And there's a budget task force where uh, e even if it's an important position that had to be filled, mm -hmm. the elected officials had to go to the budget task force and convince them mm -hmm. that this is a position that had to be filled. There was a function mm -hmm. there that a human being had to mm -hmm. perform. Uh, but if it wasn't needed, say there are multiple uh, people in the same category and we could do uh, the same work with less people, that's what we did. Mm -hmm. So, and that and in the clerk registered deeds office, uh, really the electronic uh, recordings, the e-filing enabled us basically to do more and more transactions each year with the same amount of staff. Mm -hmm. So that shows it's a success. Yeah, I mean, spending less and having technology be more efficient, reaching more people and make it more faster and less time and saving right. money. I think and and part of it is the um, taxpayers, the consumers in Oakland County are an mm -hmm. educated group of people. And as they learned more and more things can be done electronically, uh, we tried to promote it through uh, advertising and speaking to groups. But I give credit to the people of Oakland County because they figured out hey, it's easy to e-file or e-record something, so why don't we do it that way rather than taking gas money to drive to the county, stand in line at a counter. Mm -hmm. um, our motto when I was clerk was online, not in line. Mm -hmm. And the more <laughs> online transactions, mm -hmm. there are less people in line so that the people are in line can get faster service. Mm -hmm. So it's a win-win-win. Yeah, yeah, I like that quote though. Yes, <laughs> online, not in line. Yeah, that's a good one, that's a good one. Uh, uh, so, I mean, um, you were in the clerk, you were a county commissioner, chairman, you were in the Senate, in the legislature, state rep. So you have a lot of experience and you know how Lansing works, which is very important for someone that represents Oakland County to know how the yes. Lansing works. And, you know? and part of uh, the job of the clerk is working mm -hmm. on legislation to improve election systems. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we did a fair amount of going up to Lansing, testifying before uh, legislative committees, mm -hmm. uh, there was the uh, mortgage uh, 
fraud issue, and we oh. testified in Lansing about ways to uh, eliminate mortgage fraud. And so, I mean, having been a former legislator, that definitely helped me in my job. Also, being an attorney for over 30 years, um, I filed court papers. Uh, I paid fees. I, I filed uh, motions, motion precipices. So I was familiar with each aspect of the clerk's office from being either an attorney or a public official in the legislature. Mm -hmm. And Jose, I know you're a township trustee in Independence yeah. Township. Uh, I started out as a township trustee in Highland Township, but one of my jobs was to not only work with the clerks, but the other local officials mm -hmm. to tell them about our services. Um, a lot of what you do as clerk register deeds is outreach to various communities. Here are the mm -hmm. services, and we had mobile offices uh, once a month at different townships and cities around the state. We went to farmers markets where we even uh, went to the Birmingham farmers market one time and a couple came up mm -hmm. and they said they wanted to get married and we issued them a marriage license right there in the farmers market. Oh, really? Yes. How oh, interesting. Very interesting. So, um, and you, I mean, you implement that during the... Yeah, we, uh, Ruth Johnson was the clerk before me and she mm -hmm. had started mobile offices uh, but we tried to do as many as we could. Mm -hmm. And in fact, in a couple of instances, we had a mobile office in the Secretary of State's office with Ruth Johnson. So mm -hmm. whether you had a state uh, issue or a county issue, you could deal with it. Mm -hmm. Well, Bill, our time is up today, but for, the, for people that want to contact you, do you have an email? Or? Yes, uh, it's all lowercase, B-I-L-L-B-U-L-L-A-R-D-J-R. My name, Bill Buller Jr. at yahoo.com. Okay. And very soon you're going to come up with a Facebook page, right? Yes. Okay. And just for you know, Bill is uh, going to be in November election? 2016. 2016. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, Jose. For being here. Appreciate really it. Very interesting. We learned a lot today about our Oakland, uh, Oakland County uh, Clerk Office. And for uh, the ones, if someone wanna, if some of you wanna be in the show, you can contact us on uh, the Jose Aliaga Show Facebook page. It's right there. Uh, if you have any comment, please feel free to write any comment. At oh, also you can contact us by calling uh, the, the number at two four eight seven three six seven one six three. Thank you and have a blessed day. Bye bye.